So I have over 2.6 million invested in property and I'm not doing this anymore. Enough is enough. I'm no longer investing in property. Hello there guys and welcome to The Break Platform. My name is Patricia Bright and today I'm gonna to be sharing exactly why I am no longer investing in to property. It doesn't make sense for me anymore and it's not the right move for me. And before you kind of wanna click off this video and be like, well, I can't relate to this. I don't have no property. I'm still thinking about, you know, getting on the property ladder or I don't have two pounds to rub together. Don't worry. I wanna give some practical advice around building an investment portfolio that might include property or might not include property so this is gonna be for all of you guys who are thinking about getting good with your money and want to make those money moves so today I'm gonna get into my thoughts around property investing and talking about what I've invested in in the past how I've built my portfolio and why I recognize that this wasn't always the right decision and how exactly I'm gonna be investing my money into the future so I was watching a video on YouTube with Kevin O'Leary and Graham Stephens and Kevin was sharing with Graham about how his portfolio was a little bit heavy leaning in the property side of things and that there was risk associated with that and it got me having alarm bells ringing because I'm probably in a very similar situation and that I've invested a lot of money into property and I've invested into property in one place London London residential homes and um, as I mentioned you can see a big number in the title I have that much money invested 2.6 million because we're not afraid to talk about numbers anymore okay it's 2021 women have some money now so i recognize for me personally that buying property is not going to be my strategy any longer and it is not a strategy that everyone needs to take to be financially free and i know that we all constantly get these ads around become a property millionaire and i bet while you're watching this video an ad's gonna come up right now that tells you to invest in property yeah did it happen? Yeah. And I 100% love the idea as property as a form of investment, um, as part of a portfolio, but it is not the only thing that one has to do to be able to actually generate passive income, begin investing and, and become financially free. Fundamentally, it actually requires a lot of cash up front. And I know that people say, well, you can get a bridging loan and you can get this and you can use other people's money. I hate all of those ideas because I hate risk and I hate stress and I'm going to share with you exactly why. In a nutshell, I've been very lucky. I've been able to have a boatload of cash. I've been a great creator. I've worked with great brands. I've built a couple of businesses. I've made passive income and if you guys want to see videos on that, leave a comment below. I'll leave a like video and interact and share this so that I know that these are the kind of stuff you want me to break down a bit more. Because of that, I have been able to generate cash to invest in properties and with all the properties that I have in my portfolio, I've gone ahead and used cash to do that which I would not advise everyone to do and I know that most people don't have the cash to do that however um, I actually came from a background of my mum building property portfolios and she's an immigrant she was a nurse and she used her nursing income to actually build her portfolio and I remember being traumatized I remember being traumatized by the stress and the strange I also remember having to write tenancy agreements deal with really aggressive te tenants deal with really amazing tenants who I never wanted to see go I had to literally physically put gloves on and clear it out of a toilet when I was 18 years old because I was helping my mum with her portfolio that stuff is traumatizing and it really did put me off the world of property investing however when I became an adult and because I had some cash I was like you know what it's one of the things I know so I'll go into that and I thus ended up building out my portfolio but now I recognize the key principles of investing which is important for protecting yourself in the long run which is diversification having all my eggs in one basket makes me feel very scared and I probably wasn't thinking about this that much earlier and it's probably a bit of a mistake that I've made but I'm glad that I've made those choices and I had made those investments but now I'm ready to make my next move and I think this applies to everyone. So the principle of investing is basically putting your money into something that you believe is going to grow that you don't have to put your time or your effort in to make it happen. It's meant to generate passive income and it's meant to grow because 
that thing does what it does. So that means a property generates rental income, a stock generates dividends, and the company continues to grow, and your money grows without you having to invest your time and your effort into it. So when it comes to property, it's not actually that passive because you do have to look after the house, maintain the house, look after the tenants, and you know, kind of manage that process. But the goal with investing is to basically make money in your sleep, put it aside, and it grows. And we also know the principles of um, capital growth so for instance a property when you invest in it it goes up in value or compound interest as well in the fact that the money makes more money over time and based on a percentage yield so here's how I'm gonna be investing going forward and some of the principles that I believe are valuable for a good portfolio this isn't financial advice this is just what I'm doing to stay rich <laughs> so index funds you hate it you love it I love it because I am very risk averse. I tell you now that I will, if I hear Forex, if I hear this, invest with me, I, I, I run away. I run for the hills because I'm scared. I'm scared, okay? I've been broke and I don't wanna be there again and I'm not dumb. So for me, index funds are a really cool way for me to invest, have time in the market um, and have all of the market versus just one particular thing. 40% is what I will be putting into index funds. What I love about index funds is that they're very passive, definitely very passive. They go up and down, but again, I'm able to be diversified within the indexes that I invest in. And if you don't know what an index fund is, I have number one, an amazing course that breaks down all of this kind of stuff. I have it linked in the description bar below, but I've also done lots of technical videos about the topic of index funds and investing in general. But fundamentally, think about um, the stock market as a shop right it's a shop there's apples there's oranges there's um literally apple and there's literally amazon and there's literally tesla and then there's all these different products and you can pick each and every individual product or you can buy a basket of all of these products and even more so and have a little tiny piece of all of them that is what an index funds and it actually tracks the entire market and it means that you in my opinion that you are exposed to less risk of individual companies falling failing not doing so well and some doing so well with index funds you have the opportunity to have passive income so if i go for an index that is um dividend paying i can go down the route that i get some money back but it isn't something that I want so I'll probably invest in ones that aren't dividend paying or I will do what is called a drip so the money that does come out in the form of a dividend just gets automatically reinvested into the fund. The next thing I will be doing is picking individual stocks and I will be putting 5% of my income into picking individual stocks. Now this to me is a risky move okay I don't like risk makes me itch but it will be a move that I'll be making because I think it's quite important to invest in companies that you actually believe in and you're ready to weather the storm and for me five percent is probably something i'm willing and ready to lose as there's always a chance of losing money when you invest when it comes to picking individual stocks i think it's really important to number one study the brand look at the financial statements read up on what's happening in the news but be ready and willing to weather the storm because companies have high performance low performances things change all the time so when you make those choices, make sure that you are informed when it comes to it. Number three is crypto. Crypto and NFTs, actually. I'm only, again, going to be putting 5% of my cash into cryptos and NFTs. And that is because I don't know yeah. about them. As much as I'm trying to like learn about them and understand them, I've got more important ways for me to use my time than to become an expert crypto and NFT kind of person. I'll leave it to the people who are like dedicated and care about this and love it. But you know, there's an element of me that's like, let me just put a little something into this. There's something in it. I don't really know what, I don't really know how. 5% works for me because I am willing to lose that 5%. And that's the thing about investing. Like you're gonna have to recognize that you're gonna lose something. So how do you feel about it? You have to emotionally detach yourself from it. A few months back, I showed about how my like crypto balance went down and I lost 1,376 pounds and some change by investing in crypto in one week. In one week. In the UK, Binance was shut down for a season and I had put like 
5,000 pounds in and literally like it dropped to like two and a half thousand pounds in like a week and a half and I was like oh my gosh this is such a mistake but to be honest it's like bounced back and more so so I love the idea of just leaving it setting it and forgetting it I don't really know why and how it works that's the truth of the matter but five percent is the amount I'm willing to bet on the crypto and NFT market and this is the point proportions matter I think that when if you look at whether whether you've got a thousand pounds, whether you've got a hundred thousand pounds, look at how you're dividing up the proportions of what you're investing in. Half of it, come on, just let it be safe, let it grow. The savings accounts, um, high interest savings accounts, there aren't many of that anymore, and also inflation is eating into your money. But yeah, index funds, and then I will be investing another 30% of my revenue and of my like income into my own ideas and into myself. And I do think it's really, really important for everyone to invest in their own ideas, their own products, their own skills, and into themselves as an individual. Because I think that the more you invest into yourself, the more you kind of grow from that. And I'm not saying that just because you invest into your business, your business will definitely make money, but you'll always learn something. You'll always feel better as a person. You'll always grow when you make those investments into yourself. And those also include financial investments. So I'll be working far more on building out some of my product ideas and some of my business ideas which will, will will require a lot of cash it requires team it requires products it requires manufacturing but again as I'm working on my proportions 30% feels like a really good number for me to make those right moves and I think that if there's anyone out there who has an idea and is something that they want to do um, but they're like how do I find the money to do it or how do I allocate the money to do it maybe this kind of strategy of looking at how to allocate your income could be helpful and then my last and final way that I will be like investing going forward will be actually investing in international property and emerging market and I'll be putting 20% of my revenue and my income into that area and I'm really excited about this I've always thought about like investing abroad and I love the idea about investing into emerging markets places that aren't you know known just yet so I've seen you know properties in Portugal I've seen properties in Africa like Ghana that just look like they're right on the cusp of like something big happening and actually I'd love to be an early adopter of buying property in those locations um so that is something that's really on my mind so maybe if you like this video we might do like an international property hunting situation okay guys that is it for me this is why I would no longer be investing in property and what I will actually be investing into going forward I hope this video is helpful for some of you guys that are out there whether you are thinking about being in the property market whether you're just like early in investing I do think there are some simple principles there that everyone could use so guys I do enjoy that video make sure you are subscribed hit the notification bell like leave a comment tell me what you want to see next but in the meantime I'll catch you all later bye